Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and for this week's vlog I sat down with Robert Nixon to talk with him about his trans classic Spiral. Plus you will get to hear more about his brand new artist album Tellurian as well. Enjoy! Robert Nixon is a DJ producer who is born to an English father and a Norwegian mother. But for most of his life he does live and work in the Netherlands. Robert fell in love with trans music and not long after that he started to produce himself as well. He had his very first release back in 2003 which was the track Out There which features Justine Suiza on vocals. Robert's very first solo release was the track Spiral which came out a year later in 2004 on Armin van Buren's label A State of Trance. Because of the 15th anniversary of Spiral and his new artist album Tellurian, I sat down with Robert for an interview. My first question to Robert was how old he was when he started producing music. I think when I, I was about 13, 14 when I first started using something called Scream Tracker. Though I can't really take that too seriously. I think I was about from 19 or 20 when I acquired, shall we say, a copy of Reason and when more serious efforts were undertaken, let's put it that way. Were there any artists you did listen to a lot at that time? Uh, I, I would think it's the usual that people would say from that time, Ferry, Armin, Chesto, all of those guys. Okay, tell us how you discovered trance music. A friend of mine gave me um, Chesto's Inner City CD from 1999 and I was just sold on that immediately. It was because uh, it starts off with Universal Nation by Push or the Anthem I think it was called on there. And, and that was to me, that was just, you know, what is this? You know, it's, uh, I mean, I've heard some trance before, I guess, you know, Robert Miles' Children and ATB 9pm till I come, that kind of stuff. But this was just something different. So that, that really just got me hooked. So we know you can play a guitar and piano, for example. Uh, do you actually have a musical background? Well, I had keyboard lessons from maybe about 10 to late teens sometime. Um, so that I can play, I can play okay on keyboard. Though I'm, I'm, I'm not as good as I used to be. Guitar is something I always, when I play keyboard, I actually wanted to play guitar. Funnily enough, but you know, keyboard is what we had, so I played keyboard. And I think I got a guitar maybe when I was about 23, 4, something like that. And I just, you know, just from YouTube and things like that, I just sort of managed to learn to play though I, I'm not very good at it I'll be honest I can I can I can sometimes record stuff for, for some tracks but it takes a million takes to, to get it down right so so what was your first release ever Sprite uh, no out there that was the first one ever okay. um, so this year 15 years ago back in 2004 your first solo release spiral came out and um, what can you tell us about the production process of this one so it was all done in reason I think it was I can't remember if it was Reason 2 or 2.5, something like that. Um, it, it could have been 3, but it well, was some, something like that. And So I had no hardware, um, it was just really all in Reason, and I was kind of scraping together the samples. You know, it was it was so hard to find a, a good kick drum back then, and I I finally managed to, to steal one from someone. And it's funny because the kick drum, it, it was the, it was a kick drum, but it had the hi-hat sample in there as well at, at, at the offbeat, and I couldn't remove that hi-hat. So I had to leave it in there, so the track had to be 137 BPM. I think it was 137, but either way, it had to stay at that BPM so that the hi-hat would be on the offbeat at the right speed. <laughs> <laughs> so did you come up with a melody or of the track first? or? I think I think that the sort of the, that sort of main melody part, that sort of pad lead, as I call it, I think that came later. I think I had the the, the arpeggi, arpeggiated lead first, you know, the dun 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 dun, and then the the, the other lead came a bit later. But I, I don't know how, how long was in between there, to be honest. It's... So, what kind of equipment did you use? Uh, Reach so or Reason. Um, the main lead was a sample from a JP8000 or 8080, I can't remember. Um, the, the, the arpeggiated lead was a subtractor. It was, I, Reason only had two synths built in at the time, and one was the subtractor and the other one was called the Maelstrom, I think, and I couldn't use the Maelstrom. I, I just didn't know how to, to get on with it. So everything was done with the subtractor. I think one of the bass lines was a sample from, a, from an Axis virus. And everything else, yeah, everything else was basically either samples or uh, 
all from the subtractor and reason. So how long did it take you to finish the trap? Probably know, maybe a week or so. I mean, it, I mean, it, it takes longer altogether. Bit you know, just all the days added up. I guess maybe a week or so. Not bad. It's, it's it's okay. I mean, I do tracks faster now, I guess, but it's, I know, you know, you take a break from it because you don't know where to go with it or what to do with it, and then you come back to it, and then all of a sudden, you know, you have this idea, and that works out, and when when it's when it's going, you know, you really get into flow, and then things can go quickly, so. Um, so Spiral got released on uh, Armand's Estate of Trends label. Was it difficult to find a label? Not, not per se, because well, not for me at that point, because I already had a release on uh, on, on Armada on sound piercing with, uh, out there, so I already had contacts by then, a few of them, and and that really is the thing you need. Really, you need to know the people, and so I sent it to to Armin, and yeah, he wanted it for a stay to run. So yeah. It was yeah. So yeah, of course, Armin supported the track a lot in his radio show and his sets. How was it for you to that he was supporting the track? It was amazing because I remember I was in the car at the time when uh, when he first played it on the radio, and he said something. And I, I'll, I'll misquote it. But he said something along, you know, if you have, ever have to tell your parents what trance is, play play this track, you know. And that's that's yeah, you know, that's 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 really cool. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's uh, that's a huge compliment. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is. So um, on the original release, it's just your name in the credits. Uh, but I've heard that Darren Tate uh, and above and beyond John Grant are also mentioned in the credits of uh, later releases of Spiral. Uh, did you produce a track together with them, or is that another reason for this? So, okay, so I, I made the track by myself, but um, someone someone sent me a link to to to, to their their track. I, was, I could forget the title, and said it all sounds a bit the same as as Spiral. And he, well, he said it in a way as if their track sounded like Spiral, but their track was actually out first. So. I was very much a rookie at this point and I didn't want to get into any wars with anyone or get into trouble so I emailed Jono and, and I asked him about it and he spoke to, to Darren Tate and basically um, I mean there was there was no there was no there was no problem or really anything but you know the the labels sort of work something out together I can't remember so they get some small percentage of whatever and I think on the original vinyl, they're, they're not mentioned in the label copy, and I think on later versions or later CDs or whatever, that's that's where they get mentioned, in, and that's I think what's caused some confusion with it. So you didn't sit in the studio together with them? We didn't sit in the studio. I mean, I would. I mean, obviously at the time, I would have loved to have done that. That would have been far better, I would think. You know, just the experience from it that would have been awesome. But no, sadly, that did not happen. So in 2015, an updated version of Spiral was released on the Who's Afraid of 138 label. Uh, why did you decide to make a new version? Um, I think at the, I, I didn't even mean to at the time. I, 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 I think I just got the, the VST Spire and I was playing around with that and I, I, was, it, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure out a melody and I thought I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to remix something of, you know, uh, and, and that, that takes away the, the, the part where you have to think of something and I'll change it into something else later. I'll come up with the melodies and the ideas for a new track later, but I just want to get stuff down first and, and then I'll, I'll move on to something else later. But, and as I was doing that, as, as I was making, well, the Spiral 2015 as it then became, I was thinking, no, I, I kind of like this now. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna stick with, with this now and you know we'll go with it. Uh, okay, something else. Recently you finished your very first solo artist album, uh, Tellurian. Uh, you're active in the scene for a long time already. Why did it take you so long to do a full album under your own name? I get, I mean, uh, I, so I did an album with Relocate a few years ago, and I mean, up until that point, I, I guess I just never had the confidence to do, either do an album or, or just just not inspired enough to do something or. And, and so ever, ever since, even while we were working on that album, I was working on other stuff on the side, which was sort of different music, as I call it. Just, I mean, electronic, but just sort of not trance or progressive or anything like that. Just different music, and I didn't know what to do with any of this, and um, it just it just kept hanging around and just, and just on the hard disk. And it, it started with that basically. I started making that kind, you know, started with with this different music, and then everything just sort of came together and I'm mumbling on now aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> so um, why did you pick Tellurian as the title for the album? I don't know it took it probably took me three or four weeks to come up with a title because I'm very bad at titles maybe 
you might notice that they all seem to be space related. They're also space themed or and even Tolerian in that sense is kind of space related because I think it means something like uh, from from this earth or from this planet or you know it's it's basically you know basically someone from planet earth and but it took forever to come up with a title and I was just looking for 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 different words just cool sounding words and then I came across that and it, I had it on a list with some other ones and basically I just picked that one in the end um, so what can we expect on the album it's a mixture of everything I mean that uh, compared to, to essence which was just full on trance this is I mean it has the trance tracks obviously there's some progressive stuff on there there's some as I mentioned before, some sort of electronic stuff, some, well I call them album tracks, it's sort of the, the tracks which someone like me can't really do anything with other than on an album, you know, I can't really release it anywhere, I wouldn't know where to release it or who would want to release it or it probably won't do very well, but for an album I just feel like it's, it kind of shows a different side of you, it kind of shows, you know, some other stuff you can do. So there are collabs on the album as well with people such as uh, Mike Push, uh, Relocate, uh, Ellie Lawson and some others. Uh, is it more challenging for you to work on a collab compared to do a track on your own? No, I, I think it, it for me, well, for me it takes a lot of the pressure away because it's, uh, you know, I, I have some ideas and not really sure where to go and then I just like, here, you deal with it, it's your problem now, you know, here's an idea, you said you were interested, now now, now do your part basically, so it's, uh, I guess, sort of lazy maybe, but... Um, so how long did it take you to finish the entire album? Oh God, uh, <laughs> I, th I think probably the first tracks I started on maybe in 2014 um, and then it just took forever and forever and forever. Um, no, I think pr the weird thing is even though I had all these tracks this, t this time, I think most of them were probably done this year or in 2018-19 or in, in that time frame. And uh, what song took you the longest to finish? Ooh, there's one on there with a guy called Astro Leaf. And I met him at um, ADE a few years ago, I think it was 2017. And he, I, I spoke to him there, and so he's a vocalist, and well, he does music himself actually, so he's both really, but. Um, so he, I spoke to him after ADE, and he, he sent me some, some vocals for a track I sent him, and, and that took maybe two years or something, over two years, I guess. To, Get that was it AD 2000 maybe it might have been AD 2016 I can't remember so I felt very bad about that because he sent it and it's awesome and it just I just couldn't get it to sound the way I wanted to and then um, so it took forever. But. Um, so when will the album be out? October fourth. And are you going to do an album tour as well? There yeah there are some I'm doing some album showcases and one at AD one at. Um, one in London, a flotation, and one in Cardiff, pure trance. Okay. Um, so on your album, we can also find a track you did under your uh, RNX alias. And can you tell us a bit more about your RNX project? That started. Um, I think I did the first one in 2012, and it really started more as just a project for me to do different kind of music under which still sounds like me but well I guess just progressive and it was at the time I was really struggling to make uplifting trance music I just couldn't get it to sound right and I was I was doing okay with this style of music so it was uh, it was just really uh, I just wanted to do it under a different name basically and I thought well RN and then let's add an X you know kind of experimental which yeah, I guess it isn't really but it kind of sounded cool so I just went with it. <laughs> so can we expect more RNX tracks in the near future? Yeah, yeah, because I think now um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm. The last few months since since I've finished the music for the album, I've been working on more R and X tracks. So okay. there should be more. Um, in 2018, you started a project with the Drift Moon called the Astrosphere. Uh, are there any more releases with him in the works as well? We have probably three or four tracks that are unreleased. We got a new one coming up end of the year, an outburst called Outflow um, and then we got to see what we do for next year because we've probably got at least two more tracks I think. Okay. Uh, are there any other projects or things you're working on right now? Uh, literally two days ago I started making uh, synth wave or synth pop or whatever you call it, that 80s style music and I'm kind of, I'm, this is, I find it very interesting so I, you know, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet but I, you know, I'm, I'm having fun with it so we'll see. Yeah, that's the most important. Yeah. Um, 
If you could pick one producer or a vocalist, who would you really love to work with on a future track? Mm, um, M83 would be awesome. I love what that guy yeah. does. It's, uh, it's so underrated, really. No one knows who he is except, what they, well, they know of the song Midnight City. They don't know the title or the producer. And they may have heard his music in the Red Bull advert, but it's... Uh, um, is there still something on your bucket list, music-wise? I'm not sure. I'd love to. I'd love to. I think I'd love to do more with with the live shows, with, with actually playing music live instead of DJing. I'm I'm kind of at a point where I've got to decide what I do with it because it's the way I do it is a bit tricky, and I'm, I was a little bit inspired by how Lostly does it now. So I'm I'm looking at ways to to redo that. But I'd, yeah, I'd love to do something more with that. So what kind of music do you listen to in your spare time? Um, a lot of rock music, really. Foo Fighters, that kind of stuff. Um, synth pop, this last week a lot. Um, yeah, punk rock. I used to love punk rock really? a lot. That's why I wanted to play guitar when I was younger. But okay. And the last question, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Well, I don't eat cheese, so I don't generally eat pizza. So, I, occasionally I order a pizza without the cheese. And, but even then it would be no pineapple, so. Okay, well thank you very much for your time and good luck with the album. Thank you. All right, that was it, this week's vlog, my interview with Robert Nixon. Robert, thank you very much for your time, much appreciated. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below and make sure to subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.